When you're working in a multi-developer environment, git push will sometimes fail. And why is this? Well, here's a commit. A commit points at a single parent commit, unless of course it's the first commit. Now a commit only knows the differences between it and the parent, the new files, the deleted files, the changes, just the differences. And those are compressed along with all of the other commits, and that makes it very efficient. The latest version of Lanyard is about uh, 72 megabytes, and that includes all the back-end code, all the front-end code, all of our images, and some of our design assets. Now the .git folder, and that contains the, the current version and all of the previous versions, the .git folder is only uh, 82 and a half megabytes. So it's, it's nearly the same size as just the current version, but it contains so much more information. And that just goes to show how efficient Git is in its storage. Branches are labels that point to a particular commit. So far we've only dealt with one branch, master, the main one, the equivalent of trunk in SVN. Branch labels can move from one commit to another, but only forwards, through the current commit's children. There are exceptions to this, but they're risky, and we'll look at those later. Origin master is the master branch according to GitHub, because we're using GitHub as our origin. Then this happens. Julie makes a new commit. She adds a file and she commits it. Now her master branch is ahead of GitHub's master branch. Dave does the same. He adds a different file and commits. Julie runs git push, and that works fine, because origin master was able to move onto that commit through one of its ancestors. But here's what happens to Dave. He runs git push and it fails. He gets an error message from GitHub, and that's because Origin Master cannot safely move onto his commit. To do so, it would have to move backwards uh, and then around, and in doing so, it would lose Julie's changes, which, of course, would be completely rubbish uh, for a version control system to do. This is why branches can only safely move forwards. So what now? Dave needs to create a situation where his changes are ahead of Origin Master. He starts by running git fetch, Git fetch updates your local .git folder with all of the information from the remote, GitHub in this case, but it doesn't touch your working directory, it's totally safe to run. It's one of the few commands, along with uh, git push, that require a server connection. And you can see now the prompt has got these two uh, arrows pointing in different directions. This indicates that uh, Dave's version of master has diverged from the origin, and that's, that's what we're seeing here, this, this divergence. So what Dave does is he merges his changes with the origins, git merge, and then the name of the branch he wants to merge with, uh, in this case, Origin Master. When he does this, as you can see, uh, Julie's file has appeared, and the tree now looks like this. There's an extra commit that brings uh, the two branches together. So now when he runs git push, that works fine, because Origin Master now has a, a path to his commit. Hurrah! A shortcut to doing that is git pull. What git pull does is it does git fetch and then it merges the current branch with the remote branch it's linked to. And that's why uh, when we checked out master, we made sure that it was linked to the one on the origin. After a few developers have added files, our log looks like this. Six developers have added a file each, and our log has become completely ridiculous. These merge commits have absolutely no informational value to us. What we really want is a log of six lines one for each file added by each developer. And to do that, we're going to need to alter history and learn how to do that safely.